Hey guys, me again with another YouTube video. And I don't usually open up the videos looking at the gun that we're going to be reviewing, but the image that happened to be on the desktop when I went to go do the video was the next Master Edition build, and I don't want to spoil that just yet because that one's been kept under wraps pretty well so far. So what are we looking at? What's this Blue Jay Industries M4 PDW that I'm looking at? We're tired of seeing those damn things. You've built... 10, 12 of those, we don't need another one. It's not a PDW, I got you this time. In fact, this is Blue Jay Industries M4A12. This takes a little bit of um, the upper receiver build that I did with uh, the H&K style charging handle um, and puts it on an M4 basically and turns it into its own thing. Um, I nicknamed this one the Pistachio because contrary to belief, this isn't a white that you're seeing, this is actually like a really offset green. Um, it kind of looks like pistachio pudding in a sense, maybe a mint pudding, um, but I like this one. This one's pretty legit. It has really, really nice features on it. It took super, super long time to uh, render and make, uh, but it paid off because it looks fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and review the Blue Jay Industries M4A12 carbine. Um, this is a carbine, super short, uh, but not PDW length. Ah, thank God, it's not the Master Edition build that we were going to talk about. So, I'm just going to wait for LDD to open up. And this one makes it look like it's yellow. Trust me when I say it's a pistachio green. If you don't know what a pistachio green looks like, just Google some shit. So, what is it? It is a 5.56x45 style rifle, like I usually do with my M4PDWs. Aside from the fact that this one is slightly longer and a little bit bulkier so that this is a carbine version and that it uses a different style upper receiver. Uh, so we will talk about that as we uh, review it. So we're going to start in the back and work our way forward. So in the back here we have the same stock that we used on the um, FN Herstal uh, SCAR PDW except with a, a different modification in that the back here is curved this way and around this way so it fits so much more comfortably in your shoulder against bare skin you never really notice it and when you're wearing like a shirt or something eventually i'll get around to modifying it so that it follows the curve of, of the uh entire stock but i haven't done that just yet so i don't know when i'm going to get around to doing that you have your cheek rest here which basically also acts as a buffer tube if there was on the one on this rifle. This one operates off of um, direct impingement like an AK, so you don't really need a buffer tube. So this is basically just a cheek rest, curved on top, so it's super comfortable when you're aiming down the sights. Speaking of sights, basic advanced warfare sights, as you can see, basically kind of looks just like that. Threat indicator right there. Adjustment knob pieces, they fold down on these hinges here, fold down on, on these hinges up there. Um, I might switch to using the uh, MP7 style sights that I did, in case you guys remember those, um, which I have uh, pistol sights built in as well. These are just rifle sights, the standard ones that I have in my templates section of uh, LED. This little magical section right here. There they are right there. Uh, red dot sight right there. Um, this is uh, FN Herstal Scar L, the Peacekeeper Grip. This is on the barrel to um, Star AUG. This is a magazine design that I did that I always reuse every once in a while if I need to get a certain width down. This is Allen's Custom Legos uh, EOTech front foregrip design, rail design, vector stock, missile design for Star Wars. Um, another magazine design, Star Aug Scope. This is the, uh, the, the Troy Industries Battle Axe style stock for M4s. Uh, another rail design there, rail design. Um, that was a experimental build a while back. Um, I don't think I'll ever use this thing, to be completely honest. Rail rail. Um, flush grip design right there. Allen's custom Lego scope. And that's my entire template section, basically. So I'll digress from that. Um, stock is adjusted via this pin on this side. One or two positions. This is the shortest one. Uh, the longest one will be obviously like right there, which is pretty huge to be completely honest. Throw that out there. Put that right there. Grab that. 
pretty long length of pole. I don't think even the tallest of people will be able to say that this is too short. So that, that's pretty long length of pole. And I recognize that there probably should be like a middle setting for other people, but um, until I go back to edit it or something, that's not a thing just yet. Uh, this isn't really designed for military use. This is more civilian, so that's why there's only uh, semi-auto. So white for safe. Flip this switch up. Semi-auto, ready to go. Same thing on this side. Ambidextrous selectors and whatnot. Whoa, oh shit. <laughs> Boom, boom, flip it up, flip it down, flip it back up, it, it's being weird. Trigger, right here. Pull the trigger, let it go. Oversized trigger guard in case you're wearing gloves in a wintery environment, even though, again, it's not really military use. It's more so long for uh, civilian use. Rubber side plates here, which are rounded so that they feel comfortable. Rubber back strap here, all the way down and all the way along the front, so that's more comfortable as well. And it's on both sides. Super nice design. This is an AK-47 style magazine release, so that it's fully ambidextrous. Flared magwell here, which has the flaring on it, as you can see. Magazine window, bolted on, like so, like so. Just a really interesting design. 45 round standard magazine. I can't believe this is connected to the weapon. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of digging to find where it connects. That's where it connects. Delete that piece. Drag it up the top. Really, really nice magazine design. This one was modified. Um, so as you can see, it's got the rubber bottom piece here so that when you drop it, it doesn't break. And then something that I don't usually do is that on the side here, these pieces stick out more than the pieces on the inside. So these are too high. This was one high, two high, one high. And this is too high all the way down, too high all the way down. And then one, 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 one. And one around the front and then too high on this side as well, too high on that side, one, 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 one. So that's pretty cool. Throw it back in there. Just a little bit more detail here and there. The Peacekeeper style front foregrip, super comfortable. What I found is that you can take and you can jam your thumb up between here and here, the bottom of the uh, forend here, and you can keep the barrel down. Um, so that's pretty legit. Bottom rail system, top rail system, no side rail systems, just uh, vents for the barrel. Barrel is made of rims. As you can see, it's fluted, which means basically just better heat dispersion. Standard muzzle brake here. Pretty legit. Love it. Looks great. Sling mount here, swivels as it should. Front foresight. You guys have already seen that. Uh, handguard is uh, hollow. All the way through. You can see the barrel. Free float barrel, super accurate. Like I said before, it's fluted, which means better heat dispersion. And then we get down to the upper receiver, which is probably the most interesting part, which is why I saved it for last. Uh, brass deflector here, forward assist here, just like a standard M4. Uh, shell ejection port, just like a standard M4. But the really cool thing is actually the charging handle. The charging handle is on this side, like my Ace. Uh, Galil style upper receiver that I did like super long time ago. It's the brown one or brown one, brown one. This one, charging handles on that side. Oh my god, this one looks like shit compared to the other one. Uh, the charging handles here. So this one's exactly where that one is, except whenever you pull the bolt back, it locks up in this little notch here, like an HK MP5. Um, so you can hit it down, and then you're ready to go. So that is how, uh, instead of having like a normal bolt catch, you would just hit it down like an MP5, and then be ready to go once again. So that's pretty cool. 
and that's basically the main feature. Uh, so the reason I call it the M4A12 is because the normal M4 has an A1 at the end of it, M4A1 carbine. The 12, or the 2 I should say, comes from the AK-12 because the AK-12 has a bolt that works pretty similar to this one. It has It ejects on either side and fully ambidextrous, basically like this one, um, whereas this one has a different style charging handle. So instead of putting M4A1-12, I did M4A1-2 and just dropped one of the ones. So M4A12 is where we got this from. This is a really cool design, super amazing. I love how it looks. I want to build it in real life. I have the lower receiver and the upper receiver basically built, except it's not going to look as cool as this one does uh, because of the black, the gray, and then the light green that just... It works really, really well. I love how this one turned out, um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get like a Lego shipment in sometime soon, and I'll be able to build it. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys later in another YouTube video. This one's another 12-minute long video. I don't know why tonight all my videos have been 12 minutes long. They're usually like 10 minutes long. Um, so, yep, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to come right and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. If you guys want to see this model and more, don't be afraid to check out my website at bluejidthemeister.weebly.com. It's free and always will be. I try to update it as much as possible. I know I've been lacking on the updates lately. Trust me. I'll see you guys later. Thanks.